All right, all right, live again. I almost one minute past eight. I'm almost late. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining in as always. Uh, thank you for being a part of the live stream and um, enduring as you've as you've seen the evolution of my um, my wild hair again tonight, and uh, the evolution of uh, drinking some great whiskies and discussing great whiskies and and seeing what we have to share around. Uh, evening, Jay Hodes. Evening, a whiskey out show. Just dramming. Jerry D. Minton. Good to see you all. Thanks for joining in. Hey, it's um, it's Friday night. Um, so I thought we might have a um, <laughs> hair flick number one. There it was. You saw it, Goucher. You got in first. Uh, I thought we might tonight we might be a chance to talk about some of the things that um, I got asked some great questions uh, uh, last night actually after the stream that I wanted to uh, share around with you all and have a have a discussion around what what that. What they were and why they're important. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, we're at Friday today. Yesterday, uh, I had a. I went to, as I talked about on yesterday's stream, I I we I went to um, a distillery. Went had a distillery tour um, with an old friend Nigel, and we went with some friends on a on a road trip to um, to a distillery out in Gosford called Distillery Botanica. I talked a bit about that distillery last night and how I picked up some gin and. Got a t-shirt, which was nice. Um, so, uh, happy outturn day to everyone, by the way. But yes, thank you, Cal, a good good point. Happy outturn day. William, good, thanks for joining. Uh, Jehetho, thank you, good to see you. Happy well. Um, so, really what tonight's about um, was a couple of things. Uh, outturn sort of wrap up, if you like. If you like to see, if you wanna have a chat about what was going on in outturn today and what's to discuss. Pardon me. Uh, or, or not, or and. Uh, I just want to discuss a question I got asked on Instagram. Um, now I need to grab my phone here just to make sure that I'm uh, I, I get the question right because I've got a um I want to make sure I get the question right. So bear with me here. Um, I'd love to hear if anyone's having a dram at the moment as well at the same time uh, to say hello. I mean, let me know if you're also joining in for a dram and what you're drinking. Uh, you know what? Oh, this is really frustrating. I look. I'll, I'll be able to. I'll be able to. Um. I'll be able to. Uh, remember what the question was. Anyway, look. The question was from from a member uh, who asked me this question on Instagram last night. Um. Um. Was the question was when doing distillery tours? What's the etiquette and what's the difference between touring a small country distillery like I did yesterday? and a big um, commercial distillery like you might in Scotland or America in some cases, or even Australia soon as well. Um, what's, the, what's the difference, um, what's the difference in between those two styles of, what in tours, in, in the experience, and what, to, and what to expect at those, and how to, and how to get your etiquette right between them. Um, <laughs> uh, Muzman, good to see you, the, the Cad Bowl, Eagle Rare, good to see, good to see. Uh, Calte, can we talk about the November, December outturn? No, we can't. We're way too, way, way too early for that. Um, Muzzman, good to see you. No SMWS, J Hoods, you need to fix that. Soda water only tonight. It's Friday night, you're having soda water? Okay. Good evening, matey, good to see you, Tommy. Ockentoshin, Blood Oak. Will, is it any good? I'm always funny about Ockentoshin. It's always one of those distilleries. Actually, I can, I'll remark on something, actually. Uh, Dr. Jason Lamb, Jimmy Martin, Whiskey List, Jimbo Oss, Old Poltney, 45 Finn, thanks everyone who's joining in. Look, uh, Pip Hills, the founder of the society, actually once said that he was reluctant to ever bottle, bottle lock and toshin because he said it all tastes like soap. Um, <laughs> I think it's a comment he still stands by today, which is great. Um, so really what I wanted to touch on was the distillery etiquette, as it was the question from a member. Uh, and she asked, what is, you know, what is distillery etiquette between visiting a small distillery, a large distillery, and how to approach them differently. Now, I touched on one thing to do with um, to do with whiskey distillery etiquette last night, and that was um, uh, if you're if you visit a winery, now if you visit a winery and you like their wine, um, <laughs> nicer than soap. If you visit a winery, you love the tour, and you like their wine, you buy a case. You buy a case of their wine. Um, if you don't like their wine, you buy a bottle of wine. It's just good practice, it's good manners. They've taken the time to take you around um, and, and enjoy things with you and, and show you around their distillery. 
So I think it's just good etiquette just to splash out on one bottle, at the very least, if you've toured the distillery. And you know, I'm not expecting you're not expected to buy a case of spirits each time you visit a, a distillery. But you know, that's always just you know something worth asking. Uh, random question, Matt. Any Society Glen Keith? Yes, quite a few over the years. Um, haven't seen any in about 18 months. But you know what? Stuff goes in and out all the time. I mean, distilleries come in and out of like cycles, as we call them and parcels of whiskey come in and out all the time. Glenkeith is very accessible uh, as a blender's malt, um, so it's easy to get single casks for us out of that distillery. Um, it's uh, only because it's a very commonly used, uh, what they call a B-grade, mid-grade malt. Uh, it's, not, it's not a cream of the crop distillery. It's not a, it's, it's not a, um, uh, a cheaper malt distillery. It, it's sort of like, to put it in perspective, it's gra it's grading in the malt schemes for blenders is that it's a Glen Keith is a better than Glen Tockers, not as good as Klein Leash kind of level of distillery for their blenders malts. But we do get we do have we have a few through some of them mean and they've been fascinating. I mean they were we had a twenty four year old and we had a a twenty four year old Glen Keith and we had a twenty eight year old and we had a couple of eleven and twelve year old casks as well. They were lovely. Uh, I don't have any left of those. I had a bottle of the twenty four in the office. Uh, years ago, and that was um, oh no, like a year ago, whatever. Uh, that was lovely. So that was a 2017 bottling, I think. Um, yeah, Glen Keith's always quite tropical. It's always lovely. It's always uh, um, oh hey, uh, Ollie, I thought it was you. I thought it was Ollie. I, I, I assumed it was you. Good to see you, Ollie. Um, uh, Tasmanian whiskey join. Um, Jay Hodes says, uh, Ockentosh and finishes aren't, aren't my fave. The age statements are great. Love the 10. Haven't had it for a while though. I don't remember the 10, uh, J Hodes. I, I I remember the obviously the 12 and the the 18 and stuff and the oh, the terrible three wood, if I'm being completely honest. It's not a great whiskey. It tastes like um it tastes like plastic in a glass. Um Tasmanian whiskey joint. I'd love to know who that is. <laughs> I probably we probably know each other. Um uh, Dr. Badger, good to see you. Uh, so yeah. So it's, it's um, we've had a few Glen, Glen Keiths, just to finish that question, yes. So in distillery tours, okay, so if you're touring a distillery in Scotland or you're touring it in Australia, just the first thing is, of course, be polite. Um, most of the time, a lot of the time, especially even in Scotland, uh, if you're touring tours, if you're doing tours in Scotland, if you're doing them in Ireland, uh, if you're doing them in Isla, if you're doing them in Campbelltown, you're probably doing the tours with a farmer or someone who makes this stuff, who someone who either grows barley, could be could be a barley farmer, probably was a barley farmer, is now a distiller, maybe came from uh, coopering casks to distilling whiskey. They're creators, they're makers, they're farmers. So don't expect them to always be uh, ambassadors for the brand. And I think that's a good differential there. I love talking with ambassadors uh, when, I'm, when I'm talking about spirit because they're often, or they should be, the most researched on the topic. They should have... Uh, a certain level of cachet of research and of not just for the category and not just for the spirit type, but for their brand as well, of course. Um, however, when you talk to distillers and tour, tour guides and stuff like that often, uh, like the tour I did at Glen Scotia is a good example. The tour at Lagavulin is another one. I was taught, you, well, I did the tour with um, with real sort of like the makers and the, the person I toured the distillery with at Glen Scotia is a good example. They were a, a, they were a farmer, they're a barley farmer who works there. And works with their barley scheme and, pardon me, um, in terms of making good spirit. Uh, Robert Akers, Whiskey Taylor, thank you for joining in. Buy a case, yeah, buy a case of the stuff. Um, 2017 SMWS Ultimate Whiskey Tour of Scotland. Amazing tour. I wish I was on it. Andrew took lots of photos and it looked like an incredible time that you guys had. A real insider's tour of distilleries around Scotland, which is what the society does well. Um, I think there's uh, two or three tens I had... Would have been at least three or four years ago. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time. I don't think, I, and I don't think they still make it now, Jay Hodes. It's all the realm of no age statement stuff. But speaking of which, we have an eighteen-year-old from Distillery Five, which is Ockentoshan, um, coming out in our Christmas out turn. There you go. There's one little sneak peek, and it's an eighteen-year-old Oloroso uh, single cask from SMWS coming in the Christmas out turn. Je uh, Cal, you asked for something talking about Christmas out turn. There's one, but I, I'm not going to give you too many because you know it's like. It's not there yet. We're not there yet. We're still building it. I mean, it comes out 15th of November. I better check my date on that. The first, the second, the mid-November is when it comes out. We always do, that's the only time that Outturn is on a different day from normal. Um, 
but it's, it's uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to make sure I get this right. 15th, yes. Friday the 15th of November is the next outturn after today's one. Um, <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't taste like soap. It, it's a delicious cask. It's truly like ruby. It's If you tasted it without knowing what it was, if you tasted it completely blind, uh, you'd almost be confused to thinking it's an Armagnac. It's so sweet and ruby and lovely. It's, mm, it's delicious. Uh, I'm going to pour myself a whiskey because I'm just talking so much um, and I keep forgetting to pour a whiskey. But I haven't decided what I want yet. Um, there's a few bottles around the table here. Uh, how about, how about something petered? It's almost Peter clock, isn't it? It's almost time for a bit of Pete. Yeah, you know what? I was going to pour this 29-year-old, um, but I'm going to go with this 21-year-old. 21-year-old petered whiskey. We've got it, we've just got it so good at the moment these days. Look at this, here we go. Now I know it's backwards, I know it's backwards. I'm using the front camera so I can reply to comments and actually see what's going on. So the label you're about to see is back to front. I have had people tell me this and so there's no point holding up the label. I'm gonna hold it up anyway, okay, I'm sorry. Um, 66.145, Flambe away. A 21 year old single cask from Distillery 66. This is coal fired era of this distillery. They were the second last distillery. First, uh, first last being, sorry, first last. The se they were the second last distillery to remove coal-fired stills and move to steam. Uh, and then the last distillery to do so was Glendronach, of course. Um, who ripped, they ripped theirs out in 96. I think these guys did it in, no, it can't have been 96. It must have been 99 and they did it. But they, yeah, 98, uh, 98 and then 99. I think I'll have to. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, definitely Peter Clock. I'm going to pour a little bit of a wee dram of that one. So that's Flambe away. That's a um. That was came out a few months ago, actually. That one, but it's um. Yeah. Uh, what have we got here? Let me have a look at some of these comments. Wow. Um, uh, whiskey sec. Good to see you, mate. Uh, Caltain 99. Corn. Yes, corn. 140.1. Definitely Peter Clock, Salmon Tea. I don't have a bottle of the smoke, tea smoked salmon in the office at the moment. Uh, I can read back to front. Good, great shirt. Thanks, Whiskey Gaucho. Uh, Flambe was amazing. What's the table cover? Ah, oh, uh, 96, 98, 97 distilled. I'll get back, sorry. So Whiskey Gaucho asks, what's the table cover? The table cover is a massive, like, society tablecloth. Uh, I've got too many things on here to hold it up fully. And there's too many things on the edge of it here, including glassware that I know I'll break. Uh, I'll try and hold it up so you can see it. There you go. It's like a massive sort of logo on our green now, sort of bottle green thing. We use it as a sort of a table runner um, at some of our events and stuff, I think. So, um, yeah, that's just, I've just got the table runner on the table at the moment. Because it's called a table runner, I've got a table. Um, Cal Tay says 98, 97 distilled. Yeah, so Cal, um, coal-fired stills were a different beast. And Glendronach and Ardmore were the two last distillers to rip theirs out. And um, and change to uh, steam direct heat, uh, which is safer, more consistent, uh, and more sort of controllable, rather than shoveling coal into beneath a still to maintain the heat uh, to distill the spirit. So this is actually from an era where they this they were still um, distilling with uh, with coal fired uh, stills, which means that it's an inconsistent production method, but it creates a much uh, much more desirable spirit quality, I would say. Uh, there's a, something about coal-fired spirit which is absolutely lovely and sumptuous and delicious. And this 21-year-old Peter Whiskey is fun. You know what? It's fun. We've had a few old Peter Whiskies this year, um, which has been great. We've had a couple of 28 and um, older ones coming as well. Actually, there's a really lovely old whiskey coming soon. I can't talk about yet. We get a good balance, so we get a great balance of younger casks, like things like Cornography that was three years old, and things like older casks, like a 29-year-old grain or a 21-year-old Peter Whiskey and everything in between. As I've said before, age statements are about transparency, more than just about, um, you know, older is not better. Older is not better. Some of the best sherried whiskies I've ever had were young sherried whiskies, and vice versa. Some of the best sherried whiskies I've ever had are old ones. And just the same for every cask type, everything. But going back to, I'm getting off topic. Going back to the distillery profiles for a second. Um, yeah, Cal, this has been out for a few months. Um, it was an outturn from about three or four months ago. There's still a few left on the site. I don't know how there is, honestly. But um, we got a fair fair whack of them. There's one of 274 bottles. We got almost half that allocation, I think, or just under half of that. That's, so it's a good, we got a good amount of them. But 
You can't really turn up 21 year old Peter Whiskey. <sighs> Definitely Peter Clock. Ollie, I think you were right. So, uh, yes, Whiskey Gacha, that's correct. Um, yes, that was 1.183, Vibrant Enigma. You know that cask well. So, uh, look, that was like, if, I haven't written a comprehensive list of these or anything like that, but if I was to cover off a few of those points that I was trying to get back to was, one, be polite, uh, be courteous. It's, it's likely a distiller, uh, a young tour guide, a farmer. It could be, there's so many different people that do these to, do tours at different distilleries, regardless of size. Um, the second thing I'd say is, uh, these distilleries, distilleries that, that offer tours, don't remember, remember not every distillery offers a, offers a tour. A lot of the workhorse distilleries in the Perno and Diageo folios don't offer tours. You can't tour, oh, I might get this wrong, that the, the changes all the time, but I'm pretty sure you can't tour Linkwood, you can't tour Glen, Te Glen Keith, sorry. Distilleries like this don't allow tours, um, at least Glen Keith certainly didn't last time I checked. Um, and so uh, I, ac I accidentally found Glen Keith Distillery because uh, it's it was just behind, um, we, we were vis I was visiting a house in that area and it was a house that's owned by Perno Ricard and I had the, it's in front of the distillery, I didn't realize I was just accidentally there. Um, so be polite. Second thing is don't ask for anything that, uh, don't ask for things that, <laughs> How do I say this? Don't ask for stuff that isn't on the menu. Like, uh, just because the society has casks there, just because other bottlers will have casks at these distilleries or have them off site, doesn't mean that they can just go around popping bungs off casks. And, um, and you know, say, because you've asked nicely, oh, well, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll offer you something that's not on the menu. I think that's really a bit, um, a bit presumptuous and a bit rude. Uh, I'm, I'm quite sort of, um, I'm quite traditionalist in that sense. I think that what's what's available to you in the um, on the offering is what you should be looking at, and um, and be and you know you've got to say it's it's extremely it's extremely humbling to do these tours and to learn from the horse's mouth about what the production is and how it works and how their team works and the people behind it. I think that's really a beautiful thing. So let me just grab a few questions. Um, oh, also, yes, hello, Andrew. Sorry, I didn't see you sneak in there. Um, Richie Fernando, how you going? I did 16 tours tour in Scotland last November. 16 tours, that's a pretty impressive number. I always say that you can't fit more than really two or three in a day, uh, if you, especially if you're doing a full tour, because it can take like an hour, hour and a half sometimes. Um, so, you know, and also the travel between them can be quite long. It's, Scotland's not as small as you think if you're driving around. So, or and the same could be said about Australian distillery tours as well. Uh, Cash at 1888, thanks for joining. Whiskey and Drinkies joined. Uh, good to see you. I was just answering your question, Whiskey and Drinkies. Jimmy Martin, don't be entitled. Yeah, don't be entitled is a good way of putting it. Um, it whiskey entitlement is a is a disease. It, it's sort of like, you know, it's like, oh, I, I, I deserve to have that because I, you know, I, I love your brand. It's like, okay. I mean, it's it's kind of just a bit, it's, it gets a bit to that point where I don't want to seem like I'm, you know, I'm not getting on a rant tonight about it. Mondays are for the rants. <laughs> No, no, I'm not making a theme of that either. But I'm just saying it's sort of like it's whiskey entitlement can sort of, it seeps into it. You're like, well, if you've bought, let's, you know, over the space of 10 years, you've bought 100 bottles of Glen Wonka, 12, uh, and then you visit Glen Wonka Distillery uh, and you say, well, I've bought 100 bottles of your whiskey over the last 10 years. They'll probably just nod their heads and say, okay, there's, that's, that's all there is to it. As long as you enjoy it, that's great. But don't expect that that gets you any sort of extra level of cred through the door. In fact, well, Andrew, you're here. I can say this. Um, Andrew wrote a great article years ago. And I don't remember when you wrote it. Sorry, I think it was like 2016. I'm going to take a stab and say 2016. Uh, which was called... Um, was sort of, it was a, there was a, I think a, the article was something along the lines of uh, what whiskey bloggers are doing wrong. And that was one of my favorite articles you've ever written, if I'm being honest. I mean, I love all everything you've written, but I still love that one the most. Um, so well worth checking out. Andrew, you can pop a link in, in the description, in the, in the chat if you're still here. Um, so here we go. Uh, in Australia, they charge you 20 to 35 to see the distillery. I know it's a little different kettle of fish, but you should still buy a bottle if they charge you to see the distillery. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm still of that opinion, Cal. And I've got no problem paying for a tour. You're paying for someone's time. Uh, to take you around it's there's not they don't, tour guides don't work on work for free they're on a salary they're on a wage or something i mean there's there's it takes a time for for them to to do that exercise and take people around and sometimes even interrupt production 
I've seen that happen where production sort of has to hold a bit to let a group go through. I mean, imagine that. It's just, it's madness. Um, uh, I was visiting family in Scotland. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, you can run into some real whiskey snobs when you do a, a few tours. You can, Jay Hodes, but I also think you can also run into some lovely people. And you, you meet people from around the world. Uh, actually, here's, here's, a really, here's a really small world for you. Uh, I'm standing, this is in 2018, I'm standing in the main gift shop area at Glen Farkless Distillery. And I'm looking at all the fam- family casks in the cabinet and all the different releases that you were available on the day. And it's like, oh, this is lovely. And I'm with, uh, I'm with some of the team from the SMWS with me. I'm with uh, Jim Coleman, uh, who's just recently retired, and I wish him all the best, and uh, Tom Smith from our US branch. And uh, I'm standing there with two colleagues, and I hear, well, Matt Bailey. <laughs> and I'm like, I heard an Aussie accent say my name, and I go, from behind me. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I turn around, and it's an old friend from uni that I haven't seen. I hadn't seen her for... 15 years almost no 15 not or even almost 15 years i hadn't seen her for 15 years about or thereabouts uh maybe 10 at, at the least but 10 at least or 15 and she spotted me from across the room in glen farkless distillery in in scotland it's like that you know i think there's what's like it's not six degrees of separation it's like there's some word for it if anyone knows what that is put that in the comments like paris syndrome or something how you can be on the other side of the world and you run into your neighbor from back home kind of thing or, you know, anyway, just really well, weird where you see people uh, like that thing. And I love that kind of thing. Uh, best tour I've ever been in Australia was Belgro. Yeah, Peter's a legend. He just did it for me and my fiance at the time. Jimmy, I'll totally agree with you on that. Um, I think Belgro did great tours only because it's so off the wall, so quirky. Um, but you didn't, you know, you, you don't sort of, you know, press Peter for what, you know, I don't know. Anyway, you just sort of just go, it's like, there's a sort of a line in the, a line of, you know, whiskey entitlement with a small trade. He's a farmer. He's a farmer, let's be honest. And he's a very good one. Uh, R. Scott Coon joined. Good to see you. I went to Isling Distillery Griffith Distillery, but no whiskey ready to purchase. That's okay. Um, uh, that's Tim Duckett, by the way. Who's Tim Duckett? What about Tim? Did you, did he join? I didn't see. Um, uh, anyway. Um, so, so whiskey entitlement is the second tip. First is uh, be polite. Second is whiskey entitlement. Don't, don't be a whiskey wanker about it. And I think my third tip would be, um, uh, oh no, well the third tip is sort of, you know, buy something on the way out, you know, even if, it, even, see, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, I, the tour, I, I've toured Abelau Distillery twice, which was great. Um, they didn't have anything the second time, I think I went, they didn't have anything at the gift shop at all. Uh, and no, no bottles really that of interest, it was just the core range, like a 12, 16, 18 or something. And I bought the 16, I bought a bottle of the 16. I was like, well, I really appreciate being here. And you don't see the 16, or at the time you didn't see the 16 much in Australia. Maybe you do now, I don't really keep track of it as much. Um, and you go, well, I'll buy the 16. It's like, that's fun. You know, it's like 100 pounds or something, or 84 pounds, or I don't remember how much it was. And and you go, okay, you know, so I enjoyed it. I'll buy a bottle and I'll take one away with me and I'll probably enjoy it with some friends at the hotel back that night or something. I don't know. Oh, just sorry about your other comments. Sorry, yes, I got it now. Sorry, Jay Herds, I got it, yeah. Um... That's really mellowed out now. It's really become all like um, like bacon char and a little bit of floral and mm. it's, it's something that Peter whiskey when it gets old, uh, it may lose some of that initial sort of whack and that initial sort of smoke, uh, but it, what it loses in that you know peaty whack to the face, it gains in you know oak sugars and complexity, and I think that's uh, this is an example of that right here. Oh, that's lovely. Highlander smoke is just different. Just different from P, uh, from Isla smoke. It's drier. Um, Stephen, uh, sorry. Um, Eklund Park, so 105 infused haggis to at least buy something. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, leave with something, even if it's a memento, even if it's just like a, you could leave with it. You could leave with a, a bloody t-shirt or a, a, a cap, as I know Gaucho likes to do. Um, Stephen Austin, 1984, good to see you. Um, yeah, so... That's my, that's and my my three main rules and as I said just um, you know if things happen as well that's the other that's the other thing things happen don't always expect to be uh, to for everything to go on time don't expect for everything to go right uh, again I'll refer back to Andrew here he's written a great piece on um, whiskey and wisdom 
about um, how to do Scot- how to do whiskey tours in Scotland, and I think his guide is far better than anything I could provide for you on the spot right now. But it was a very cool question though, and I really appreciate that one from um, from Irina there. Um, and I yeah, I'll, I, that's that's all I am. Um, so um, yeah, Mad Hatter, I like to pick something up from the gift shop. So that's that's my that's my Friday little sort of run through tonight. I, I said it'd be about thirty minutes, I think, um, which we've been almost on now. And uh, I, like I said, I'll review a few whiskies coming up in the next review. Review. I've got to stop saying that word. I'm not going to review any whiskies. I, I merely taste them and talk through some of them. Uh, and they're already panel approved, so they're lots of fun. There's so much coming up, however, especially November, December for the Society. Uh, October is a bit quieter for events, which I'll be completely honest, is a relief. Because <laughs> uh, September was so jam-packed with all the gathering events and... Um, so we've still got like uh, five or six events in October. Don't get me wrong. We've got the amazing Maestro Returns dinner in Sydney with Andrew and Franz. Uh, we've got, um, that's Franz Schurer for those playing at home. Um, if, and I, honestly, if you've never seen, uh, if you've never been to one of Franz's dinners, it is otherworldly. It's something else. So um, check it out. Just, just for you, Goucher. There you go. Bam. Uh, and then the other one is, um, of course, in Melbourne is the Super Normal Dinner. That's on the first week of uh, November, the 2nd of November. I hope to see you there as well. Very limited seats for both of those. They're both up online now. And um, Christmas parties will be up online very shortly. It's amazing how fast this year has gone. Uh, I'm, I'm actually in awe at how quick this year has been. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend, a long weekend. Uh, I can't guarantee I'll be doing a stream tomorrow. Uh, I have a prior engagement. But if I, um, if I do, I do. If I don't, we'll see how we go. I've actually got a, um, a good whiskey friend coming around tomorrow uh, afternoon. So we might record something and put it up as our story, uh, as an IGTV story. Um, and this guy knows his whiskey, but I haven't asked him if he wants to be a part of it yet. He might be a bit camera shy. I'm not sure. If he's not, then he's in. Done. Um, bring AD to Melbourne. Andrew, did you read that? Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, um, thank you, Jimmy. You have a good one as well, mate. Have a great long weekend, Jimmy. And I'll, um, and whiskey sec you too. I'll, and Robert, I'll see you all maybe tomorrow. Watch our stories to know what's going on. Catch this video later on YouTube, maybe in the next hour or so. And I'll, if you need to rewatch any of it and I'll, I'll catch you all on the other side. Cheers. Have a great weekend. Thanks everyone.